Tonight at 5, now that Canyon is a wet city, it's facing some new challenges. Details ahead. Plus, Amarillo College is using a popular app to bring awareness to the farming industry. The warm air and the strong winds stuck with us as we went back to work and school today. When will things finally settle down and when's our next chance for rain? I've got those answers coming up. Live from KVII Studios in downtown Amarillo, ABC 7 News at 5, the Panhandle Spirit starts now. Good evening. This is the all-new ABC 7 News. I'm Lisa Schmidt. And I'm Larry Lemons. And tonight we want you to know that our new look is all for you. Yeah, from a new set, new graphics, new production music, new master control, new weather system, a new name, and so much more. It's all an effort to bring you the news better than ever before. And we're going to take you through a tour of our brand new digs later in the show, but first we want to get you caught up to speed with the weather. Storm Search 7 meteorologist Alyssa Pollock with your new weather system is here. I know. I feel so at home back here. Wait till you guys see what's ahead. It's just fantastic. The weather today couldn't have been better, at least when it came to our temperatures. Another beautiful warm day. High temperatures made it into the 80s and even the 90s for some areas. Although if you did step outside, you also probably noticed those strong winds gusting to near 50 miles per hour at some of our school net site locations. As we get a look at our weather headlines, for you. Things are going to be quieting down for tonight as those wind speeds drop back to the 10 to 20 mile per hour range out of the southwest. However, they're not going to be calm for long. They are going to be on the rise once again tomorrow afternoon. Our warm te our temperature is going to be even warmer than what we saw here today. Once again, setting up those conditions for that high fire danger. That'll be sticking around for the next few days. Finally, things turn cooler around here as our next cold front blows through for the middle part of the week. I'll let you know when our next, next chance for rain moves in coming up. If you are stepping out the door for tonight, no chance for rain in sight. In fact, we are setting up. A beautiful evening. Temperatures still in the 70s by 9 p.m. as that mostly clear sky hovers overhead. Temperatures will slowly drop back down to the middle 60s by the midnight hour and we'll be waking up to temperatures near 50 degrees for our Tuesday morning. I'll let you know what the rest of the week has in store coming up in a few minutes. Right now, back to Larry. All right, thanks, Alyssa. Well, happening now, TxDOT has set two opportunities for public involvement on Loop 335 projects as they lay out possible future plans. The meetings are a part of a collaborative effort between TxDOT and the public to come up with solutions that provide safety, mobility, and accessibility for the traveling public. All interested residents are invited to attend the public meetings tomorrow and Thursday to express their views and to discuss the project with TxDOT representatives. And you can hear from TxDOT officials tonight on ABC 7 at 6 and 10. Also happening tonight, the City of Amarillo Utilities Office will host an informational meeting on the Georgia Street Interceptor Project. This is a new wastewater collection project which, once complete, will allow the city to abandon and remove the existing lift station in Austin Park. Tonight's meeting begins at 6.30 at Austin Middle School. New tonight, Rick Cusman Amarillo International Airport has entered into a three-year contract with Republic Parking for the management and operation of the public parking area. The Chattanooga-based company will invest $250,000 in the parking systems technology and equipment over the next year to help achieve this goal as part of ongoing efforts to improve customer service. And the City of Canyon has a new special event ordinance taking effect starting tomorrow. Yeah, that new ordinance will require permits in order for people to host special events inside the city limits. ABC 7's Drew Powell joins us now with more. Drew? Thanks, Lisa and Larry. The City of Canyon passed a new special events ordinance in anticipation of new events looking to come into Canyon now that the city has gone from dry to wet. The City of Canyon is hoping to double the number of events that come to Canyon. City Ordinance 1021 will require permits in order for special events such as fairs, arts and craft shows, parades, and public entertainment to be held. This application process will enable us to gather the information that we need as a city to help that group prepare for their event and make sure that they, they can get over all the hurdles that are involved with any major event in town. Since Canyon is now legally able to sell alcohol, city leaders believe a wider spectrum of events will look to come to Canyon. If they do intend to do that with their events, we just know that that, that may cause that event to be larger. Uh, we know that the, just the general dynamics of that event might change. It might be exactly the same and have the same number of people. We, we just don't know what to anticipate. We just want to make sure that the city is prepared for whatever event is, is going to happen. The downtown square and Connor Park are two locations where new events could be held. 
Private parties are not the same as public events and may not require permits. City-sponsored events will not require a permit either. Uh, Chief Davis has the final say on all the events uh, just for safety precautions. So yeah, it's going to be very convenient for any outside group to come here to Canyon for a convention, a gathering of that nature. Now there is an application fee for a special event or a parade. It is $25. However, there is no application fee for a block party permit. Reporting from the Kennedy Broadcast Center, I'm Drew Powell, ABC 7 News. Drew, thank you. Turning now to Austin, where state senators are set to begin considering a contentious plan to repeal a law granting in-state public university tuition to the children of some people in the United States illegally. Democrats and Hispanic advocacy groups champion the law, while Republicans have pledged to end it. The bipartisan tuition law sailed through the legislature in 2001 and received Republican Governor Rick Perry's signature. But many of the modern Texas GOP's top leaders were elected promising to advance harder line immigration positions. Though divisive, the repeal should eventually clear committee and get full Senate approval. Next, a bill that would allow licensed holders to carry concealed weapons into university buildings and classrooms cleared a House committee last week, meaning it could hit the floor of the full chamber soon. The measure easily passed the Senate last month, despite opposition from top university leaders statewide. Obtaining a concealed carry license requires being 21, meaning many college students would not qualify. Next and happening tonight, Buckner Children and Family Services is hosting a free foster care and adoption meeting at 530. Buckner is one of the oldest organizations of its kind, serving more than half a million people each year. And anyone considering foster care or adoption is encouraged to attend tonight's meeting at Buckner's office on South Tyler. Find out more information at abc7newsamarillo.com. Tonight, Amarillo College will use the popular app Farmville to explain farming techniques used in our area. The lecture series sponsored by the AC Biology Department and High Plains Food Bank kicks off tonight at 6 on the Washington campus. Tonight's topic will focus on the economics of growing food when space and resources are scarce. The lectures are free, but non-perishable food items will be accepted on behalf of the AC Food Pantry. Still to come, getting well means more than just taking medication. A look at foods that could affect your prescription's effectiveness. Panhandle Health is next. Plus, it is the fastest growing developmental disorder in the U.S. We'll show you how doctors are using robots to connect with kids with autism. That's in tonight's Practicing Parents. Our warm, windy, and dry pattern prevailed for another day here on the High Plains. I'll let you know when we shake things up. Coming up in the full forecast after this. We're watching ABC 7 News at 5 with Lisa Schmidt, Larry Lemons, and Storm Search 7 meteorologist Alyssa Pollock. This is ABC 7 News, the panhandle spirit.